All right, it's exactly seven o'clock. We can get started. Okay, this is Dr. Owen Conquilio once again welcoming you here at Teacher A Online Review Center, where a dreamer becomes an achiever. Yesterday, we reviewed for general education covering English, science, and Filipino. However, we only touched the surface level of English as a subject matter. For the purpose of this review, we will be digging deeper into it in preparation for your majorship examination. As customary, let us begin this uh, session with a prayer to be led by Ms. Louise. Good evening, everyone. Let us bow our heads and feel the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for what you have given us and what you have provided us throughout this day. And may we ask for your guidance and help us gain lots of knowledge and understanding for today's discussion and review. All these we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. I would like to greet all our viewers via Facebook Live and invite you, if ever you have not been told yet, we are inviting you to join our final coaching session for only 500 pesos. It will start on August 27. So you can, uh, you can have um, final coaching or preparation for your licensure examination. Okay, so let's get started with our first question. All right, so for our first question, this governing body in language banned any existing or future debates on language origin in 1866. Okay, what is this governing body in language? A, is it the Linguistic Society of Paris? B, American Psychological Association? C, Modern Language Association? Or letter D, International Phonetic Alphabet? Again, what governing body and language banned any existing or future debates with regards to the origin of language in 1866? Is it the Linguistic Society of Paris, the American Psychological Association, the Modern Language Association, or the International Phonetic Alphabet, or IPA? Those are watching via Zoom. You can also answer the questions. They just... Give me the letter of what you think is the correct answer. Okay, you're answering letter A. Let's wait for others. Eliza Flores answered B. How about the other Zoom participants? I only, uh, I only have seen, I think, four, five responses. What do you think? Joanne and Jericho answered C. Tabi answered A. Tabi, how sure are you that it's the Linguistic Society of Paris? Tabi? Sandy answered A as well. Sandy Marquez. Uh, Tabi left. All right. So let's see. What's the correct answer? It is letter A, the Linguistic Society of Paris. Can someone tell me why the Linguistic Society of Paris banned any existing or future debates when it comes to the origin of language? Anyone? Ma'am, good evening. Po. Yes, good evening. Ma'am, I think because um, during 1866, the Linguistic um, Society of Paris banned existing or future debates because of the origin of language, because of its short shortage of empirical ev evidence about its subject. That is 
exactly the reason. Because of the lacking or insufficiency of evidence that would support all the existing um, hypotheses or theories with regards to the origin of language. Uh, yesterday, we have touched those or some of those theories in our review in Filipino. They still, can you still remember one theory that we that we mentioned with regards to the origin of language? Can you give me one theory? If you could recall, last night we have mentioned the biblical theory. Okay, we, we even talked about that. And we also had mentioned the poo, poo theory. Okay, and the bowel theory, which says that peep or people, okay, or our ancestors started mimicking sounds created by animals in the bowel theory. Okay, and many other theories, but none of those are provided with sufficient evidence. That is why in 1866, the Linguistic Society of Paris banned any existing or future debate. So up to the present, there is no clear explanation on how language originates or originated then, and that's fine. Okay then, now how about the other options? Definitely it's that it is not the IPA or the International Phonetic Alphabet because it is meant to have a system in which there is only a one-to-one -one correspondence between each sound in the language and its phonetic symbol. So we use uh, IPA for phonetics for pronunciation. So that's not the correct answer. MLA and APA, are you familiar with those two? The American Psychological Association and Modern Language Association? Which are English teachers or? The APA and MLA are, yes, yeah, citing styles or citation and referencing styles or formats. So those are definitely not the correct answer. The MLA is uh, used in citing um, in technical writing for the subjects of arts and humanities. Okay, for example, um, if you are going to use a parenthetical citation to cite your sources, you have to indicate the last name of the author and the year of publication. Like in this one, Contilio, 2021. In, okay, it's, it's the other way around. Um, last name and author, that would be the APA, and then the MLA is the last name and the, the, and the page number. So um, if you would like to use parenthetical citation for your arts and humanities work, you use MLA, last name, and then the page number for APA, for social sciences, then you make use of um, the last name of the author and the year of publication. All right, next, let's have question number two. In the ancient times, Chinese merchants will, were able to do business with English speakers in the docks of ports, even without using a common language for communication. What variety of language made this possible? A, is it lingua franca? B, creole? C, pidgin or D, jargon? Again, in the ancient times, Chinese merchants were able to do business with English speakers in the docks of ports, even without using a common language for communication. What variety of language made this possible? Is it A, lingua franca, letter B, creole, C, pidgin, or D, jargon? One. Letter Jerica answered letter C. C. How about the others? Okay, pigeon, according to Angel, because this is used for Chinese traders. Okay. Creole. Lingua Franca is in the international language. Okay, let's see. What's the correct answer? It is pigeon. Okay, let us, uh, let us rationalize why pigeon is the correct answer. Okay, when we say lingua franca, it is a common language used between people who speak different languages. Well, it could be right, but the thing is, uh, during the ancient times, there, were, there was not 
or there was no international language set yet. Unlike this time, we know that English is the global language or the international language. Okay, the best uh, variety of language that would explain in the given context is the pidgin. It's a simplified version of the lingua franca where people okay, are trying to communicate across different languages, develop their own form of communication. How about Creole? Creole is, a, is an established form of pidgin where a language developed from communicating over two or more languages is taken up by a culture as a native language. Let's say, for example, in certain parts of the Philippines, there are uh, Creoles or um, nowadays we call them as a dialect, okay, which is a combination of different languages. For example, in the northern part of Luzon, okay, um, Itawis, also an example, it's a combination of um, Spanish, Ilocano, English, and um, their mother tongue. So uh, in that case, it will be considered as a Creole. A jargon, on the other hand, is referring to words or phrases that emerge to cover ideas with a specific community. So often, uh, when specialist terminology is required, so we make use of jargons. Okay, so that is question number two. Next, let's have this one. This refers to the specific, to the way a particular person speaks at a specific time as distinct from others. Okay, what do you call that? A, idiolect. B, dialect. C, mother tongue. Or D, colloquial. A. What is being referred to as the way a person speaks at a specific time as distinct from others? Is it idiolect, dialect, mother tongue, or colloquial? I'm not seeing answer. I'm not seeing your answer here at Zoom. Why? Mahirap. Only Junaline, I think, answered. Mahirap yung tanong. Bakit ang bilis mo nasagot, Junaline? Um, I just referred to the um, keyword doc. Okay, so a uh, keyword. Let's uh, eliminate the okay, distractors. Let's have, of course, it's not mother tongue. What is mother tongue? Um, or native or like the language that is first introduced to us. All right, so we also call it as first language or uh, native language. So that's not yes. the correct answer. Okay, let's remove another wrong answer. A wrong option. It's not colloquial. colloquial. Why? Colloquial refers to um, words which are informal and could somehow um, attributed to being street language. Very good. So uh, colloquial language is the informal use of language. Okay, it could be attributed to slang or street language or use of contractions or uh, figurative uh, speeches. So colloquial is not the specific or particular way a person speaks. Okay, so you only have two options, the idiolect or the dialect. Okay, dialect is the language spoken by a small group of people. So the yes. correct answer is idiolect. idiolect. Okay. Remember that. Idiolect is a particular way a person speaks at a specific time. So our idiolect makes our manner of speaking unique from other people. Diba? Ngayon nga, ang daming mga impersonators, they can easily impersonate a person based on their manner of speaking because uh, we make a trademark when it comes to our uh, way of delivery. So idiolect ang tawag doon. Okay. 
We have explained that. Now let's move to the next one. Which of the following is a free morpheme? Letter A, of. Letter B, re. Letter C, full. Letter D, none of the above. Which of the following is a free morpheme? Okay. Ayan. Alam nila ang sagot. Uh, you can join via Zoom. Uh, please message teacher A back to uh, Zaman. All right. Let's see. What's the correct answer? Which is the free morpheme? The correct answer is of. Okay. What branch of linguistic deals with morphemes? What branch of linguistics deals with morphemes? Morphology, doc. Okay, morphology. Okay, a morpheme is the basic or the smallest unit of word. So it can be classified into two. It's either free morpheme or bound morpheme. Can someone differentiate? A, okay, let's differentiate. A free morpheme, it's called free because it can stand alone as an individual uh, word. So it is in itself meaningful. Okay, while a bound morpheme needs to be attached to a free morpheme to complete its thought or meaning. Okay. It can be derivational in the form of prefixes and suffixes okay, or inflectional or in the form of suffixes. Where, uh, those are uh, letters that we add or morphemes that we add at the end of the word. For example, in order to change a word to plural from singular to plural, we, had, we add S. Or in order to change a word from present to past tense, we add ED. So those are suffixes. Okay, free morphemes, on the other hand, could be content words or functional words. Pag sinabi natin content words, ano ba ang mga, uh, what particular parts of speech are considered content words? What lexical nouns content words? Correct. Noun, what else? Yes. Aside from nouns. Pronouns. Adjectives. Adverbs, okay, those are content words. Functional words, okay, include what? Verbs. Uh, verbs, that's, uh, verbs are under content. Prepositions. Yeah, conjunctions. Ano pa? Conjunctions. Interjections. Ano pa? All right, prepositions, conjunctions, interjections. All right, then, let's continue. Ah, this one. Which of the following statements is not true about linguistics? A, linguistics is the science of language. B, linguistics is developed solely for the understanding and analysis of the international language, English. Letter C, the major divisions of linguistics include phonetics, grammar, semantics, and pragmatics. Letter D, none of the above. Okay, which is not true about linguistics? Is it true that linguistics is the science of language? Is it true that yes. linguistics? Okay, that's right. So is it true that linguistics is developed solely for the understanding of English as international language? No. No, okay, so that's the correct answer, okay. Why, what makes this wrong? The science of language exists or is um, established not only for the English language, but for all the languages of the world, so. B or option B is wrong. Um, let us say it's correct. Although not all branches of linguistics are mentioned, but still, it only says include phonetics, okay, grammar, that's syntax, okay, semantics. What else? What, what are missing? Morphology. Okay, morphology, phonology. Okay, are not mentioned, but it's all right. It doesn't, uh, okay, yes, correct, Miko. It's not exclusive to English. 
Okay, but in here, although all the branches of linguistics are not mentioned, it's all right because the sentences include. Okay, then that's it. Let's have question number six. Okay, number six. Liza is very active in Twitter in sharing her feelings and opinions about political issues. The question is, what function of language is she utilizing in such case? A, instrumental function. B, regulatory function. C, personal function. Or D, heuristic function. Liza is active in Twitter in sharing her feelings and opinions about political issues. In short, she is a keyboard warrior. <laughs> what function of language is she utilizing? Instrumental, regulatory, personal, or heuristic? Okay, final coaching will start on August 17. So if you have not enrolled yet, uh, you can join us for only 500 pesos. Okay, correct answer is personal. Let us identify the different uh, functions of language as enumerated or explained by Michael Holliday. According to Holliday, there are four functions or basic functions. Those are instrumental, regulatory, interactional, and personal. Now, um, instrumental is the use of language when we were when we were still at, uh, when we were still babies we use language to express our needs okay so uh, for example when a baby is hungry of course uh, the baby would uh, ask for for food you mga toddlers all right regulatory is where language is used to tell others what to do so when you are using language to give commands or requests that is regulatory Interactional is to make contact with others and form relationship. Personal use, yung sagot kanina, is to express feelings, opinions, and individual identity. So the, the last three functions, the additional functions of language, uh, are heuristic. It is used to gain knowledge about the environment. Okay. Imaginative, to tell stories and jokes or to create an uh, imagery and representational to convey facts and information. So the heuristic language is asked is used to ask questions or to inquire. The representational function is is for you to convey or share information. Okay, so that's it. Um, next, which is not true about English as a language. Letter A, it is the lingua franca. O alam nyo na, um, hindi yun yung sagot. Okay, letter B, it is the world's most mixed language. Okay. Letter C, it has simple rules for inflection. Or letter D, it has no particular order for words. Good evening, Jennifer Agrate. which is not true about English as a language. Okay. I, okay, I can see here, Sir Miko got the correct answer. Sir Miko, why is letter D the correct answer? You're right. Let's talk about this. What makes letter D the correct answer? I think uh I think ma'am uh, this is the correct answer because uh yung uh, it's it has uh, no it has uh because uh, English language has a uh, order of words and yung uh, one of the proof uh proof to that I think is the structure of the yung, yung, yung correct. structures the, so, yung, uh, All right correct there is a systematic way of arranging words in the English language. That's why we have sentence patterns. We have uh, grammar. Actually, as compared to most language, it English has uh, is one of the most structured. Um, 
options B and C are correct. Why? It is true that English is the world's most mixed language. Okay, it is, I think, or it has, I think, the biggest lexicon among all the languages in the world. What is the lexicon of the English language? When we say lexicon, the total number of words. Lexicon is the total number of words in a language. And English has a rich lexicon, a very big number, has a very big number of words. That is, how many words are there in the English language? There is more than half a million, more than 500,000 words in, in English. And that is the fruit of um, borrowings from different languages. English has borrowed from many languages, including, including uh, the Filipino language. Can you give me one example of a Filipino word that is borrowed by the English language? Yung mga Filipino word. Yeah, but talaga ba? Baduy now is, is baduy accepted na in the English dictionary? Is it is a fruit of borrowing from many languages, correct? Ah, okay. English word na pala ang baduy. Okay. Ano pa? Adobo. Okay. It's an acceptable English word. Okay. What else? Halo-halo as well. Ano pa? Yo-yo. Okay. What else? Um, English borrowed words from Latin, from Greek, from Chinese, from, from Hindi. Uh, shampoo is an, is an Indian word. So, and many others. So, letter B is correct. Letter C, it has simple rules for inflection. Totoo naman na, di ba? It, uh, it's very simple when it comes to English. For example, when we use the word uh, bake, if you want to change it to pass, very simple. You just add letter D, big. Okay. If you want to, um, if you want to convert it to a noun, then you just add R, baker. So simple rules for inflection. Okay, that's number seven. Let's have number eight. In what word should the sound P be aspirated? Uh, I'll, I won't be reading the options. You choose. In what word should the sound P be aspirated? Um, let me ask someone to read the options. Elise. Elise, can you turn your, your microphone? And, okay, Elise, could you please read the options for us to figure out in which word should we be aspirated? Okay, letter A, pack. Letter B, snap. Letter C, keeper. And letter D, leopard. Okay, or leopard. So which one is the correct answer? Which one is the correct answer? Letter A, po. Yes, letter A. We aspirate the letter P when it is found in the initial part of the word. So it's not pa, it's pa, pack. What else? Well, let's say people. You aspirate the first P, but you don't aspirate the second P in the, in the middle of the word. Okay, people. Pen, pen, pig. So aspirate the letter P if it's in the initial part of the word. Number nine. What is the place of articulation of the sound? Is it palatal? 
Is it glotal? Is it bilabial? Or is it interdental? Okay. What is this place of articulation? I have mentioned earlier IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet. The IPA categorizes or group phonetic sounds into three. They are grouped according to voicing. Okay, that's why we have voice and voiceless sounds. They are also grouped according to place of articulation, meaning uh, or referring to what particular vocal organs do we use in producing the sound. And it's, uh, it also grouped the uh, phonetic sounds according to manner of articulation or how exactly do we produce the sound? Is it a glide okay, or plosive? All right, this time let's focus on place of articulation. When it says palatal, okay, when we say palatal, what do we use or what particular part of our vocal organ do we use in producing the sound? Our palate, kaya siya palatal. Kapag glotal, Pag glotal, what part? Okay, the glotus. Okay. How about bilabial? By lips, both our lips, our upper lip pressing against our lower lip. Oh, that's a bilabial sound. Okay, interdental. Teeth, correct. So, do we use our teeth? Do we use our lips, our palate? In the, okay, the glottis. It's a glottal sound. So letter B is the correct answer. Okay, to, uh, to give you a recap of the different um, place of articulation, bilabial, the sound and PB, yes, as well as the M, the letter M, the M. Okay, the W, those are bilabial. Labiodental, S and V, the in the labiodental because when we produce the sounds our lips our lower lip in particular touch the reach of our upper front teeth okay that's and the dental i am okay, anyway i'll be providing you a copy of this so you can review glotal there's only one glotal sound and that's the okay the let, represented by the letter h okay number 10 question what is another term for spelling? Is it calligraphy? B, orthography? C, stenography? D, penmanship? What is another term for spelling? I have a headset mask, please. What do you think? When we say graphy, definitely that's something to do with writing. Okay? Penmanship, alam nyo na. Hindi yan yung tamang sagot. So, is it calligraphy? Hindi. Alam nyo yan. Hindi siya calligraphy. So, you are... Uh, okay, I think you're confused between orthography and stenography. Stenography is different. Pa? It's like symbolic representation. So, correct answer is orthography. Another term for spelling is orthography. Take note of that. Okay. Next one. In which word should T be pronounced as fast or soft T? I won't be reading the options. A, B, C, or D. In which word should T be pronounced as fast D? You read the word aloud. Okay, I can see. All right. 
I think you know the correct answer. Esbon? Sir, is this a sir or a ma'am? Esbon? Um, sir. Yes, ma'am. Could you please read the options? Uh, football, butter, internet, buffet. Okay, very good. So, in option, sorry, <laughs> typographical error. That's a letter B, butter. Tama yung pagkakapronounce ni sir. Now, let's look at the different pronunciation of the American T. Okay? In Filipino, there's not, it's not problematic. We only pronounce the letter T uh, in one way. But the American T is pronounced in many different ways. First is the normal T. Like, for example, t take. Okay? Letter T, when found in the beginning of the word, just like letter P should be aspirated. So instead of saying take, it's t take. Okay? Number two, T could be pronounced as soft D. Or fast D. When do we pronounce the letter T as soft D? English major. When do we pronounce the letter T as soft D? When it is after the vowel A. When it is or after a, the. Uh, or, yeah, vowel. Yeah, but How about, that's just a guess. <laughs> yeah, okay. But uh, that's uh, that's close to the correct answer. But we only... Pre <laughs> that's close to the correct answer. Why? Um, let's try to figure out or let's give examples of words wow. wherein we pronounce the letter T as softly. Betty. Better. Water. What else? Centimeter. What else? Letter T is pronounced as fast or soft D when it is found in between two vowels. A E I O U. You can see here, water. Okay, it's in between the letter A and the letter E. Better. The two letter T's are in between uh, two letter E's. What else? Batter, okay, batter. It's in between um, A, okay, as in batter, A and E. So when T is in between two vowels, you pronounce it as soft B or fast T. The glottal T, okay, or when, uh, when we produce T with a stop, we do it if the letter T is followed by a letter N. Okay. Like in this example, kitten. Okay, what else? Press the button. Okay. Fountain. Britain. If letter T is followed by a letter N, it has to be pronounced with a stop. Parang nagkasupress yung, yung sound at the end. Fountain. Okay. Bitten. And the last one, when do we silent the letter T? We winner. are referring to the winner, okay? Instead of saying winter, we say winner, okay? What else? Internet, kanina, typographical lang kanina. Internet, international. What else? When letter T comes after the letter N, the letter T is silenced. Okay? So, kanina sa glotal, if the letter T is followed by an N, may stop. Kapag this one, yung, yung pronunciation for, if the letter T is preceded by a letter N, it has to be silenced. Okay? That's why. That's why we say inter internet instead of saying internet. But if you're asking me, Ma'am, does it mean that internet is wrong? Well, it's not wrong. It's just that we are referring to the American T pronunciation. Internet, 20 are still correct. But in the American accent, it's internet. It's 20. Okay. Next. Number 12. In which sentence does the word well function as adverb? Letter A. The well serves as water source for the whole village. Letter B. A well-written resume is an edge over other applicants. Letter C, the president's speech during the sauna was well applauded. Letter D, 
the teachers are pleased to see that the students are behaving well during the accreditation visit. In which sentence does the word well function as an adverb? The well serves as water source for the whole village. A well-written resume is an edge over, the other, over other applicants. Letter C, the president's speech during the sauna was well applauded. Or letter D, the teachers are pleased to see that the students are behaving well during the accreditation visit. What's the correct answer? Ayan. Glory. Jean-Marie, Jane. C.G. Aguinaldo. All right, Jonathan. Okay, nakuha na nila ng tama. Nasa sa Facebook and uh, sa Zoom. Correct. Letter D. Okay. Why is letter D the correct answer? Someone from Zoom, volunteer. Kindly turn your microphone on. Can you tell me why letter D is the correct answer? And what is the function of the word well in options A, B, and C? Doc, can I answer it? Yes, please. Um, option A, the well there, um, functions as noun. Correct. In letter, in letter B and C, the well there functions as adjective. That's it. In letter D, and it functions as an adverb because... Because it modifies the word behaving. Okay, behaving there is an adjective and well modifies the adjective. And that's uh, the purpose of an adverb, to modify adjective, ad yes. verbs, and even uh, adverbs or other adverbs. Okay, next. Thank you very much, ma'am. Next, number 13. Which of the following sentences has faulty pronoun antecedent agreement. So you have to take a look at the sentences very closely. Which of the following sentences has faulty pronoun antecedent agreement? Letter A, posted signs around the campus are advising people to wash their hands to avoid the spread of flu germs. Letter B, the ones who cheated during this exam will be reprimanded for their actions. Letter C, if you need help with your grammar, we may want to take advantage of this online writing lab. Letter D, both Susie and Jen will try to visit their parents this coming weekend. What's the answer? Correct answer is it's a little delayed in in Facebook. So what does this mean? Yung letter C ba na nakikita ko kanina, is that for number 12 or number 13? Kindly state uh, the number of the question. Ayan. Okay, what's the correct answer? It's letter... Okay, correct, Sir Biko. It's letter C. Why is letter C correct? What's the pronoun in letter A? Their, their hands. So, what is the antecedent of their people? Correct. Okay, next. The ones who cheated their actions. So, the, the pronoun is there. The antecedent is ones or those people who cheated. Number or letter C, if you need help with your grammar, second person, your antecedent. And then, we may want to take advantage. It's third person. 
So, faulty pronoun antecedent agreement. Letter D is correct. Both Susie and Jen, the, the two of them. So, to use their is, is appropriate. Okay, so that's pronoun antecedent. Always remember, pronouns should agree with, uh, with their antecedent in terms of number and gender. Okay, next number 14. In terms of verb form, which does not belong to the group? Letter A, buy. Letter B, put. Letter C, hurt. Letter D, cut. In terms of verb form, which does not belong to the group? Buy, put, hurt, or cut. Ma'am Quinn Marie, what's your answer? C. Why letter C? Um, for me, po is buy, put, and cut is a verb which is action. You can buy, uh, I will buy some food, so it's a verb. I will put the Clothes, also verb, then I will cut uh, something, it's also a verb, but hurt, it, it can be an uh, adjective, I think. That's on mm -hmm. my Because we can say, I'm hurt. Okay, yeah. But, all right, uh, that's one possible reasoning. However, uh, the question says, in terms of the verb form, mm, who has a different answer? Madami din, may mga sumasagot din na letter C sa ano, C sa Facebook. Bakit hurt? Possibly they have the same idea or reasoning. I I go for A. Why ma'am, uh, si ma'am Junaline ulit magdi-discuss. Okay, let me call uh, some, someone else. Galing ni ma'am eh. Um... I want to hear other voices naman. Si, let's say, si, hmm, Ma'am Joanne. Can I answer, okay. Can I answer for me? Okay. Okay, I think the answer here is A, by, because, um, and question kasi in terms of verb form, which does not belong to the group, okay? So when you put something, parang it's going away from you. And cut, it's also going away from you. So uh, it's ah. by, it's your taking. <laughs> I see, okay. All right. Oh, are irregular no. Okay. Uh, so, pwede din yun, we can look at it in that uh, perspective. But nabang, nabanggit kanina ni sir regular and irregular verb. Okay, all of these are irregular verbs. Lahat sila irregular. Uh, ay, lahat, itong o, B, uh, okay. lahat sila actually are irregular verbs. So it's not a question of which one is regular and which one is irregular. Kasi what is by definition a regular verb? A regular verb forms its past and past participle uh, form by adding B or ED. Thing. So, what is the past form of buy? Bought. Past participle, bought. So, irregular verb siya. Put, hurt, and cut are also irregular verb. But, their common denominator is that they do not change the spelling when changed to past and past participle form. Yeah. Walang pagbabago yan. We don't say hurt, hurted. Okay? Or we don't say cut, cutted. Okay, so among other irregular verbs that do not change their spelling when changed to simple past and past participle are bet, walang pagkakaiba yan, laging bet lang, broadcast, burst, cut, cause, cast, fit, forecast, hit, hurt, let, miscast, 
Okay, offset. Okay, next, put. Uh, anyway, ayan, complete. Okay, uh, complete list of irregular verbs that do not change their spelling when, uh, when expressed in the past and past participle form. Okay, you would have a copy of this. Okay. Number 15. Whose car is parked in front of the building? The word whose. The word whose belongs to what lexical category? Whose is a noun, pronoun, adjective, or adverb? Whose car is parked in front of the building? Is whose a noun, pronoun, adjective, or adverb? Correct answer is? A pronoun. Correct. Okay, it's a pronoun. Okay. What kind of pronoun? Possessive pronoun. Hindi siya demonstrative pronoun. Possessive pronoun. Interrogative, okay? Interrogative pronoun. All right, next. Number 16. Pronoun pa din. The person whom the company had trusted for years happened to be a spy. What kind of pronoun is used in the sentence? The person whom the company had trusted for years happened to be a spy. What kind of pronoun was used in the given sentence? A, personal. B, demonstrative. C, relative. D, possessive. The person whom the company had trusted for years happened to be a spy. Okay. Before we answer, what's the pronoun in the sentence? Whom? Whom, correct. Is it personal, demonstrative, relative, or possessive? It is a relative pronoun, okay? And dami kasing kinds ng pronoun eh. So let's enumerate those. We have personal pronouns. Alam nyo na yan. Okay, I, we, you, they, he, she, it. Okay, demonstrative. This, that, these, those. Okay, interrogative pronouns. Those WH questions. We ask for, ask, we ask or we use for WH questions. Who, whom, which, what, whoever, whichever. Relative pronoun, who. Okay, depending on the usage. Okay, who, for example, the man who can't be moved or oh, relative yon. But when we say who is the man, interrogative yon. Who, whom, whose, which, that. Okay, are relative pronoun. Indefinite pronouns. Okay, somebody, anybody, anyone, nobody, nobody, no one. Okay, few, many, nothing. Reflexive pronouns used to indicate a noun which has been used in the earlier part of the sentence, myself, themselves, yourself, ourselves, reflexive beyond reciprocal pronouns, each other, one another. Okay. Uh, take note of those kinds of pronouns. Okay, next question. What is the term for a word adopted from another language? A, second language. B, donor language. C, loan word. D, crossword. Again. What is the term for a word adopted from another language? Do second language, donor language, loan word, or cost word? Uh, letter C. Loan word. Letter C. Correct po. It's letter C. Loan word. Some got confused and answered second language. It's not the second language. When we say second language, 
It is from the, the language. Loan. Okay, from the word loan. Okay. The second language is the word. It's the language that is widely spoken by a group of people next to their first language. So loan word is the correct answer because it is adopted from another language. Pag sinabi natin donor language, it is the language where you adopted the loan word. Okay, borrowed or adopted. Yung hiniraman ninyo ng word, yun yung donor language. Yung crossword, wag niyong pansin. Nilagay ko lang yan para makomplete yung four, <laughs> four choices. Okay, next. Number 18. If ever you need help, or if ever you need any help, if you ever need any help, just give me a ring, a call, which is the indirect object in the sentence. A, help. B, give. C, me. Letter D, ring. If you ever need any help, just give me a call or just give me a ring, which is the indirect object in the sentence. Correct answer is, ayan. Nalito na sa direct and indirect object. Okay. The power of instinct. Help? <laughs> <laughs> yung, what does your instinct say? What does your instinct say? Letter? Letter C. Okay. Tingnan natin. Uh, me. Indirect object? Yes, it's letter C. Okay. What's a direct object? Letter D, ring. Okay. Can someone explain now? Bakit naging help? Okay. Can someone explain now? Um, why is letter C, me, the correct answer? What do we mean by direct and indirect object? In sentence patterns, we have STVDO, subject, transitive verb, direct object. We also have this pattern, STVIODO, uh, subject, transitive verb, indirect object, and then direct object. The direct object. Okay, answers the question, what? Just give me what? A ring, a call. The indirect object, at, or oftentimes answers uh, the question who. Give who? Me? What? A ring. Can you give me another sentence with an indirect and direct object? She gave her boyfriend another chance. Okay, yun. Subject, she. Transitive verb, boyfriend. Uh, she gave, sorry, gave. Indirect object, boyfriend. And then direct object, another chance. Jerome gave Juliet a bouquet of flowers. Correct. Jerome, subject. Okay. Gave is a transitive verb. Juliet is the indirect object. Bouquet of flowers, direct object. So that's it. She kicked the ball. Mac Vincent. She kicked the ball. That is subject, transitive verb, and direct object. Okay. Direct object yung ball. Walang indirect object. Okay. Let's continue. Number 19. Policemen are allowed to use guns only after several years of training. What is the lexical function of the underlined word? Training. Is it 
functioning as a noun, an adverb, an adjective, or a conjunction. Again, policemen are allowed to use guns only after several years of training. What is the lexical function? Noun, adverb, adjective, conjunction. A noun? What kind of noun is training in, in that particular um, sentence? Training here, some may be confused because I wala naman anyway, wala naman verb sa option. Okay, collective. Okay, training is a gerund there. Okay, a gerund is a verb in the ing form which functions as a noun. It's a kind of verbal. Okay, so correct answer is letter A, noun. Number 20, driven by the desire to save trees, residents of a locality have started using solar appliances for their everyday needs, which is the error in the sentence or what part of the sentence has an error? Letter A, residents. Letter B, has. Letter C, there. Or letter D, there's none or there's no error. Okay. Driven by the desire to save trees, residents of a locality have started using solar appliances for their everyday needs. A, residents, B, has, C, there, or letter D, no error. You got the answer right. Alam na, alam niyo na. Sino mag-explain? Who can rationalize? Lies. Oh, Ma'am Joanne. Joanne. Ma'am Joanne. Ma Joanne uh, she sent the answer to the chat box. Yes, has is wrong because the subject is the residence. Plural, so it requires the use of have instead of has. We use has for singular subjects. We use have for plural subjects. In their past form, had. Kahit ano pa siya, whether singular or plural <clears throat> subject, if it's in the past form, that would be had. Next, number 20. China has to be prepared to meet many age-related social and financial challenges in the coming years. A, have prepared. B, was prepared. C, has been prepared. Or letter D, no correction required. So which part of the sentence requires correction? Again. China has to be prepared to meet many age-related social and financial challenges in the coming years. A, have prepared. B, was prepared. C, has been prepared. Or letter D, no correction required. What's your answer? Ma'am, Queen Marie. Ma'am, Queen Marie. Why is letter D your answer? Uh, China is singular. Okay. So. Oh, yeah. China has. Tama naman. Correct. There's no need for correction. China have. That would be wrong. China was. Hindi. Because uh, in the coming years, Okay, China has been prepared. No, then no correction required. Um, if you would use other word for this, China needs to be prepared to meet many. Ayan, tama. China is singular. So, ginago. All right. So, China needs to be prepared to meet many age related social and financial challenges in the coming year. So, China has to be prepared. Tama naman siya. No problem with the sentence. So, no correction required. Okay. Next, number 22. Um, change the given utterance to indirect speech. 
Uh, yes, Seer said, I have done nothing wrong, teacher. Okay. In, okay, if you're going to convert this, okay, if you're going to convert this, yes, Seer said, I have done nothing wrong. Letter B, Yazir told his teacher that he had done nothing wrong. Letter C, his teacher told Yazir that he had done nothing wrong. Or letter D, Yazir said that teacher, I have done nothing wrong. Which one is the uh, correct answer or the best answer? Correct answer is? Okay. It's, yes, you're right. It's letter B. Why B? Letter A is partly correct, but it does not accurately or exactly restate the utterance. Nawala si teacher. So that's wrong. Letter C, his teacher told Yazir na baliktad. Okay, so wrong. <laughs> Next, Yazir said the teacher, um, the teacher, I have done nothing wrong. It's almost just the same as the, 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 the the original Ataran. So the correct answer is letter B. Okay, next, number 23. Which of the following direct speeches is correctly written? So you have to pay attention to the punctuation mark and the message. Letter A, the pediatrician assured the word parents, your child will recover soon. Soon? Letter B, your child will recover soon. The pediatrician assured the word parents. Letter C, your child would recover soon. The pediatrician assured the word parents. Or letter D, the pediatrician assured the word parents, your child would recover soon. A, B, C, or D. What's your answer? Correct answer is letter Parang same yung B and C Pero yung B period same. Tapos yung C kama Okay, so which one is correct? A letter C Correct, letter C Okay, let's look at the other options. The pediatrician assured the word parents. Assured nga eh. Tapos may question mark. Your child will, will recover soon. Okay, so wrong. Next, your child will recover soon. Period. Quotation mark. Wrong. It should be a comma for reported, uh, for, uh, for direct speech. Next, the pediatrician assured the word parents, comma, your child would recover soon. What is wrong with this one? This one is wrong because the period is placed after the quotation mark. It should be before. Okay, just to give you a recap, how do we use punctuation marks for a report, a reported speech? If you will start with the reporting clause, he said, comma, and then the open quotation mark. Let's go to the mall, period, and then quotation mark. Okay, this is the reason why option D is wrong, the wrong placement of the period. For another one, what if it's not a sentence? What if it's, um, it's, it's an exclamatory sentence or a question? He shouted, comma, hurry up, exclamation point, if, or if it's a question, Okay, who, who are you, question mark, and then the quotation mark. Okay, take note, after the comma, the sentence that is enclosed by the quotation mark should start with a capital letter. Okay, remember that. Number 24, annually, Ayala Super Malls blank Halloween treats for shoppers' enjoyment. A, prepare. Letter B, prepares. Letter C, prepared. Or letter D, will prepare. Again, annually, 
Ayala Super Malls. Okay. Black Halloween treats for shoppers' enjoyment. The correct answer is the correct answer is letter letter B. Okay, why letter B is the correct answer? Why letter B? Anybody? Um because Ayala. Ayala Super Malls is considered a collective noun. Okay, or a name of a company. Okay, Ayala Super yeah. Malls. Okay, so it's singular. So mm. we use B prepares. We prepares. Use singular. All right. But even if it's singular, we can use prepared. We can use will prepare. Why not C and D? Ah, yes, because it, it it has annually that word annually. All right. Um, yes. Okay, correct. Because of the word annually, remember mm. actions that happen uh, regularly. Okay, habitual actions or regular actions are expressed in the present tense. So, hindi siya prepared and hindi siya yeah repeated or habitual action. Same thing with facts. Okay. Or factual, uh, factual statement, always uh, in the present tense. The sun rises in the east. Oh, palagi naman yun eh. Never magiging west, south, north. So, um, present. Simple present. Ay, mali yan. <laughs> okay, number 25. Tell whether the given sentence is simple or compound. Energy could be created out of matter and matter could also be created out of energy a simple sentence with compound subject and simple predicate b it's a simple sentence with simple subject and compound predicate c a simple sentence with compound subject and compound predicate or is it a compound sentence a b c or d a, B, C, or D? D on. Okay, the correct answer is correct answer is letter letter D. It is, no, it's a mm -hmm. compound <laughs> sorry. Letter D on. Compound subject yon. Okay, balik tayo. Bakit siya letter D? All right. Anong definition ng simple and compound sentence? A simple sentence has one sub, uh, a simple sentence expresses only one complete thought. Okay. A compound sentence expresses two complete thoughts. Okay, let us look at the that's letter D. Okay. Let's go back. Oh, wait. Okay. Not that one. All right. There are four kinds of sentences. What are those four? Simple. Compound. Uh, it's going back. Complex and compound complex. Okay. Who can tell me what do we mean by simple sentence? Sabi ko na kanina, it only expresses one complete thought. It has one. Uh, okay, I'm revealing the next question. <laughs> Wait lang. Let's go back. All right. There. One independent clause, one subject, one predicate. Pag sinabi natin compound, it has two independent clauses, meaning. Okay, there is one subject and a predicate there and another one. 
Pag complex, there is one independent clause and one or more dependent clauses. Pag compound complex, two independent clauses and one or more dependent clauses. Okay. Let's have or let's talk about the different kinds of simple sentence. One independent clause la, one subject and one predicate. That's simple subject and simple predicate. Okay. For example, Jenny cook dinner. Jenny is the subject, cook is the predicate. Compound subject, simple predicate. That means you have two subjects and one predicate or one action. Jenny and Oscar. So you have two. Cooked, okay, one predicate. Next, it could also be one subject and then two predicates or compound predicate. Jenny cooked. Jenny is the subject. Cooked and cleaned. Cooked dinner, one predicate. Clean the dishes, another predicate. Or it could be compound subject na, compound predicate pa. You have two subjects and then you have two predicates. Jenny and Oscar cooked dinner and cleaned the dishes. So the correct answer earlier is um, it is a compound sentence because you have two independent clauses. Okay. Next, uh, ito na yung number 26. Kanina yata na-reveal na answer. Tell whether the given sentence is simple or compound. Um, nakita nyo na yata answer kanina. What's the correct answer? You and I can work together and make this world a better one. A, a simple sentence with compound subject and simple predicate. B, it's a simple sentence with one subject or simple subject and two predicates. C, simple sentence with two subjects and two predicates. And letter D, it's a compound sentence. What's the correct answer? It's a letter, it's letter. Okay, it's a letter C because you have two subjects, you and I, and then two predicates. So that would be work and make work together and make this world a better one. So letter C is the correct answer. Okay, now let's have number 28. Who is considered as the master of short story writing? Earlier, we focused on language. This time, we will be focusing on literature. Who is considered the master of short story. Is it Edgar Allan Poe, Leo Tolstoy, Jose Rizal, or Rudyard Kipling? Correct answer is, alam na alam na to, Edgar Allan Poe. He is also regarded as the father of horror tales. Okay. So among the works of Edgar Allan Poe are The Raven, The Cast of Amontillado, and The Telltale Heart. The Cast of Amontillado is oftentimes taught in grade, uh, grade 9 English. Okay. How about the other authors? Leo Tolstoy was a Russian writer who is regarded as one of the greatest authors of all time. He received nominations for the Nobel Prize in Literature every year from 1902 to 1906 and for the Nobel Peace Prize in 1901, 1902, and 1909. But he never, but he never won. Only nominations. Okay. So among his works are Anna Karenina, War and Peace, The Spiritual Works. Next, Joseph. Rudyard Kipling was an English journalist, short story writer, poet, and novelist. He was born in India, which inspired much of his works. He wrote The Jungle Books, Just So Stories, Rewards, and Fairies. That's Rudyard Kipling. Okay, Rizal, I, uh, hindi ko na sinama, pero as we all know, Rizal is also the father of Philippine children's literature. Number 29, Filipino as a language blossomed during the blank occupation. 
A, Japanese occupation. B, American occupation. C, Spanish. D, Commonwealth. Filipino as a language blossomed during the blank occupation. Parang alam na alam niya yung sagot. Perhaps it was asked several times na sa review. Master na ng mga taga Zoom eh. Okay. Correct answer is Japanese. Alright, next. Who is considered the goddess of Philippine poetry? A. Ophelia Alcantara di Malanta. B. Teresa Subido. C. Aida Rivera Ford. Letter D. Angela Manalang Gloria. Goddess of Philippine poetry. Ophelia di Malanta. B. Teresa Subido. Um, C. Aida Rivera Ford, or letter D, Angela Manalang Gloria. The correct answer is letter let A. Oh, alam nila sa alam nila sa ano eh, sa FB. Ophelia Alcantara di Malanta. Next, what truth about life was presented in the story The Wedding Dance by Amador Dagio? Uh, Philippine literature. Kasama to sa mga literary pieces na dinidiscuss ng mga prof natin sa Philippine literature. A. Some men are not contented with one partner. Okay. O oh, hindi naman daw lahat. Some lang. B. Women and men are born equal. Letter C. Culture goes beyond love. Or letter D. Love conquers all. The Wedding Dance by Amador Dagio. What truth about life? Some men are not contented with one partner. Women and men are born equal. Culture goes beyond love or love conquers all. The correct answer is letter, letter C. Culture goes beyond love. Bakit ba? Let's talk about the synopsis or the summary of The Wedding Dance by Amador Dagio. It's a short story about a husband and wife, a Yao and Lumnai, who had been married for seven years. In spite of being in love with his wife, a Yao felt the need to marry again in order to have a son. At his second marriage celebration, a Yao went to check on Lumnai, knowing she was upset. A Yao thought that thought the answer to Lumnai's sorrow would be to have her join the other women during the wedding dance. Lumnai went out to join the wedding dance but decided not, not to and left. She could not stand the idea of her husband marrying another woman because she could not give him children. Okay. They love each other kasi Ma'am Jonaline says, ayan, they love each other but forced to marry Madulimay. Yes, and also in this case kasi yung custom na um, pag lalaki, parang it's yung, yung, yung ganun na belief sa culture nila na pag lalaki, parang it makes you less of a man if you, can have, you cannot have children. So, he remarried he, okay, to preserve his clan. Okay, yan. So, he, he married another woman who can, uh, who can uh, bear him a child. So, that's the, that's the theme of the story. Okay, next. This one, poetry. Tapos na tayo sa short stories, then let's proceed to poetry. A sonnet has 14 iambic pentameter lines. And that means, A, there are 10 syllables in a line. B, there are 5 syllables in a line. C, there are 8 syllables in a line. Or letter D, there are 11 syllables in a line. What's the correct answer? Hmm. Magkaka- Parang malilito yata kayo. Okay. What does 14 iambic pentameter mean? Does it mean five syl- uh, 10 syllables in a line? Okay. Five syllables in a line. Eight syllables in a line and or eleven syllables in a line. 
Ayan. Um, I think we need to talk about this. Let's have, ayan. Who answered? Mom Junaline answered letter B. Marian answered letter A. And Joan answered letter B. Okay. Miss Marian, why did you answer letter A? So, po, ma. Yes. Why did you answer letter A? Um, actually, po, I'm not very sure with the ra rationalization behind this, but um, na encounter ko lang po lang mas maraming times itong um question po na ito. <laughs> okay, sige. Then let's find out. Um, I understand. Malamang si Ma'am Junaline and si Ma'am Joanne, they answered five syllables because of the word penta, right? Because penta means five. Okay. So, yes, penta means five. But that doesn't mean five syllables. It means five ayam. Okay. An ayam is a pair of stressed and unstressed syllable. If you have five pairs, in a line, then you have 10 syllables. Okay, that's the correct, that's why the correct answer is letter A. There are 10 syllables, okay, divided by two because uh, they are grouped in pairs. One I am is a pair of stressed and unstressed syllable. That's why letter A is the correct answer. So there are 14 lines in a sonnet. In each line, there are five I ams, okay, all in all. 10 syllables. Okay. Let's talk about uh, sonnet still. There's a sonnet by William Shakespeare at sonnet number 29. Um, I think this is very much familiar with you. If you're teaching English 9, okay, English literature, you would definitely uh, give this as example or as a reading, uh, reading assignment to your students. When in disgrace, in fortune and men's eyes, I alone believe my outcast state. Allow me to read it because the next questions would, uh, would be based on this sonnet. And travel heaven with my bootless cries and look upon myself and curse my fate. Wishing me like to one more rich in hope, featured, featured like him, like him with friends possessed, desiring this man's art and that man's scope. With what I most enjoy contented list. Yet in these thought, myself most despising, happily I think on thee and then my state. Like to the lark at break of day arising, from silent earth sings hymns at heaven's gate. For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings, th that then I scorn to change my state with kings. Okay. Parang, um, I would not exchange my state even with kings. Okay. Even with those with power and richness. Kasi I have you. Okay. Parang your love is more than enough. Parang ganun yung sonnet 29. Okay. Um, let's talk about iambic pentameter. There are 14 lines. And there are three quatrains and two couplets. Yan. Balikan natin. Pag sinabi natin na quatrains, it is a stanza with four lines. Kapag couplet, it's a stanza with two lines. Pag terse, a triplet, stanza with three lines, or also it's, all, it's called terset. Alam nyo na yan. Pag quintet, five lines. Pag sestet, six lines. Pag septet, that is seven lines. And pag octave, eight lines. Let's talk about yung sonnet na third. Okay. Why are you about? 14 iambic pentameter. Kanina, yung sonnet, 29, yung sonnet 29 by William Shakespeare, it consists of 14 lines. Paano gindup yung 14? Three of those lines are quatrains. Yung first four lines, ayan, first four lines, first quatrain, yung lines 5 to 8, that's the second quatrain, yung lines 9 to 12, that's the third quatrain, and the last two lines, the last two lines, we call that as a couplet or the heroic couplet. Bakit siya tinawag na heroic couplet? Kasi the Shakespearean sonnet ends with the conclusive two lines. Parang yung conclusion, yun yung gist. Or ay, yung, yung couplet, yun yung gist. Or yung conclusion ng poem. And 
<laughs> okay. And it's not, oops. Hmm. Ayan. Salamat. Okay, let's go back to this. Okay. So I have here, ayan, when in this grace in fortune, one, two, three, four, that's the first quatrain. Okay. That's the first stanza. Wishing up to here, this is your second quatrain. And then one, two, three, four, this is your third quatrain. And this two is your heroic or your, your couplet. So that's a Shakespearean sonnet. 14 iambic pentameter line. It contains three quatrains and ends with a couplet. Okay. Now the question, the next question is, what is the rhyme scheme of a Shakespearean sonnet? When we say sonnet, Pare-pareho ang definition niyan. 14 iambic pentameter line. Nagkakaiba-iba lang sila sa rhyme scheme. May we have Italian sonnet by Francesco Petrarch. Kaya siya kinatawag din na Petrarchan sonnet. Pareho lang sila. 14 iambic pentameter. Pero nagkakaiba sila ng rhyme scheme. Yung Shakespearean sonnet, what is the rhyme scheme? Na-reveal ko na yata answer kanina. What is the rhyme scheme of a Shakespearean sonnet? A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G. A, B, B, C, C, D, uh, sorry. A, B, B, C, D, D, E, F, F, G, G, H, H, I. A, 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 B, 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 C, 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 D, 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 E, E. Or A, B, B, C, D, D, E, F, F, G, G, H, I, J. Ano yung rhyme scheme? A, B, B, a letter A, correct. A. Paano natin nakukuha yung rhyme scheme ng isang poem? We will just check on the last words, the rhyme there, and um, that those rhyming words there has a pattern. Okay, that exactly. pattern is the rhyme scheme. Exactly. Let's go back to ito. Yung, yan, Sonnet 29 is Shakespeare. So you will just look at the last word. Katulad ng sinabi ni Ma'am Chinaline. Just look at the last word. Okay, ice, that's your first sound. So mark it A. Okay, wait. So that would be letter A. How it's not work? Again, wait. Did I get the right one? Yeah. Ayan, A. State does not rhyme with eyes. So you mark it B. Christ rhyme with eyes. So that's also an A. And faith and state rhyme. So that would be a B. That's how you get A, B, A, B. First quatrain. The second quatrain, hope. That's your sound C. Okay, possessed. Okay, that's your sound D. Scope and hope rhyme, so that would be C. List and possessed, they, uh, they end with the same sound, so you have C, D, C, D. Despising, E. State, F. Bakit hindi tayo babalik sa letter B? Kasi in, ibang quatrain na yan eh. Okay, next, arising rhymes with despising. Gate rhymes with fate. And we have, we have kings. And brings, okay, so that's how we do rhyme scheming. Yeah, A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G. Okay, so that is the correct answer. Yeah, na-reveal ko na, pag na lang natin. What do we call the last two lines of a sonnet? It's a heroic couplet, okay? To be more specific. The heroic couplet serves as the theme or the conclusion of the whole poem. Question number 35. What is the common theme of Shakespearean sonnet? A, despair. B, love. C, hope. D, inspiration. What is the common theme of Shakespearean sonnet? Take note of this, ha. Even if the poem 
is not written by Shakespeare. If it follows the rhyme scheming and the definition of a sonnet, it can still be considered a Shakespeare sonnet. Okay, tayo, kahit ako, when, if, I, if I will just follow yung 14 iambic pentameter line and the A, B, A, B, C, B, C, D, E, F, D, F, G, G rhyme scheme, my work could be considered as a Shakespearean sonnet. Kahit hindi ako si Shakespeare. Okay. Um, correct okay. answer is, yes, letter B. Okay, next. Number 36. In a poem, what function does a persona take? Is the persona the author, the speaker, the reader, or the editor? In a poem, what function does a persona take? A, author. B, speaker. C, reader. D, editor. Pag persona, that pertains to the, yes, speaker. Okay, take note. In a poem, the persona and the author are two different persons. For example, I write a poem, I'm the author. But I can write a poem with a man as the persona. So, hindi, for example, uh, Shakespeare wrote sonnet, uh, wrote the sonnet. Hindi ibig sabihin si Shakespeare yung nagsasalita. Or, for example, um, yung narrator. si John Bill. Okay, yung narrator, yun yung, yun siya yung persona. So, kahit tayo, oh. sulat tayo ng poem, hindi ibig sabihin, tayo na yung persona. Okay. Ah, Magkaiba yung... Kung baga po, ano, first person. First, hindi naman sa... Pwede kasing siya... Uh, first person yung speaker. Yung mismong, uh, yung mismong narrator sa poem. For example, um, di ba ikaw author ka? Masaya ka? Sumulat ka ng poem about despair. Who is the one in despair? Yung persona. Hindi yung author. Parang ganon. We always have to... Uh, when we teach poetry to our students, okay? Iba yung tatanungin na natin. Iba yung tatanungin natin na what is the author trying to tell us? Okay? What is the message of the author? Okay? Magkaibang tanong yon sa what is the persona expressing in the poem? Mag we always separate the author and the persona when we teach poetry. Okay? And always remember, in teaching poetry, we always look at the perspective of the persona whenever we make interpretations. Kasi diba, when we teach, we teach this that topic, you know, mga, any, any poem or piece sa poem or piece sa, sa school, okay, dapat tatandaan natin, we try to understand yung perspective or yung point of view ng, ng persona. Okay. Next. Number 37. Oh, from from short story, then poem. Now let's move to drama or theater. Where did drama originate? A. England. B. Greece. C. Rome. Or letter D. Italy. Where did drama originate? Uh, Greece, Athens. Yeah. All right. In Athens, in Greece. Correct. Because that's the first civilization. And also, marami naman talaga um, mga bagay that we have right now na nag-originate sa, sa Greece. Aside from, yeah, sa literature, yung mga certain literary pieces, mythology, eh, they, they, uh, that originated in, in ancient Greek. Uh, what else? Olympics. Uh, ancient Greek. Nagsimula yan. What else? Sa drama, also, the golden age of drama, or uh, the, uh, what do you call that? The drama, drama really reigned during the Renaissance period in England. Pero yung simula talaga nun, that's in Greece. Okay. And can you tell me kung sino ang originator ng drama? Anong, anong pangalan nun ng Greek na yon?
Mga nagtuturo ng Ano English. po yun, ma'am? Um, yes, it originated in Athens. Correct, ma'am Joanne. Pero sino ang originator? Isn't si it? Virgil ba? Hindi si Virgil. Hindi si Homer. Homer is a Greek historian, uh, the one who wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey. Pero hindi siya yung originator ng drama. It's it start with the letter T. Anong letter, ma'am? T. Ayun. Tama, si Sir Miko. Test piece. That is why okay, the Greek actors, yung mga dramatists, uh, yung mga Greek actors, mga actors sa drama, they are called Thespians in honor of Thespis, yung originator ng drama. Okay, that's number 30. Mm -mm. Number 38. Which of the following statements is false? Still, with regards to drama, Greek drama aimed at teaching religion. Letter B, melodramas always have happy endings. Letter C, comedy and tragedy are the basic genres of drama. Letters, letter D, the introduction of Christianity caused the decline of ancient drama. A, Greek drama aimed at teaching religion. B, melodramas always have happy endings. Letter C, comedy and tragedy are the basic genres of drama. Or letter D, the introduction of Christianity caused the decline in ancient drama. Which one is false? Nico said letter D. The correct answer is, no idea. The correct answer is letter B. Is it letter B? Melodramas always have happy endings. True yun eh. Di ba ang melodrama, yung genre na pinapahirapan muna yung protagonist. The protagonist would encounter a lot of struggles in life. But all in all, bigla magiging successful, then uh, they would end happily. Yun yung uh, plot ng melodrama. So, letter B is true. Okay. Alin dito ang false? Alin dito yung false? Correct answer is, true ang letter C. Okay. Dalawa ang basic genres. Basically, ang genres ng, ng drama, ng play, comedy, and tragedy. There, yung others, those are just minor classifications. Okay, correct answer is, hindi din false ang letter D. The introduction of Christianity caused the decline in Asian drama. That's correct. Letter A is false. Greek drama aimed at teaching religion. Because um, Asian Greek dramas were were performed to honor their pagan gods and goddesses. To honor Zeus, to honor Athena, okay, and uh, to honor Hera. Yun yung purpose noon, why they perform dramas. And it's not teaching religion. It's actually uh, it's actually for their pagan beliefs. Paganism nga yun eh. Um, letter D, it's correct. When, when Christianity is introduced, nag-decline ang drama. Dahil nga, it's for paganism, it's, it's part of their pagan practices, eh, pagan culture. And na-introduce na yung Christianity. So nag-decline yung drama. Na-revive na lang siya during the Renaissance period. Okay, si Queen Elizabeth I, uh, she, uh, she loved watching dramas or dramatic performance, performances and or plays. Kaya nga nag-boom ang mga theaters, ang mga ang mga plays during the Renaissance period or the Elizabethan period. Okay. Next. Yes, Greek drama are not about religion. Correct. Yan. Think April. Question number 29. Uh, ito naman. Uh, drama pa din, pero, or play pa din, pero Philippine literature. The following Filipino customs are reflected in why women wash the dishes by Philomena and Colendrino. Except. 
A. Bayanihan B. Quack Doctor C. Crab Mentality D. Meddling of Neighbors The following Filipino customs are reflected in Why Women Wash the Dishes by Philomena N. Salindrino, except A. Bayanihan B. Quack Doctor C. Crab Mentality or D. Meddling of Neighbors What's your answer? Ayan. Um, Miss Joanne answered Quack Doctor. Miss Junaline answered Bayanihan. Nagbago ng sagot si Miss Junaline? Or kanina yung sagot yun, ng letter C. Who is familiar or who have uh, who have read this one? Who, why women wash the dishes? Sino nakabasa na to? Or sino nakapagturo na na tong literary piece na to? Anybody? Um, Doc, that was po. like introduced in my college days. Okay, po. Uh, so, kami nga din po, I, uh, I perform a certain character is uh, why women wash the dishes when I was in college. So, can you tell us about the plot? As, as far as I have remembered, Doc, um, the plot is like um, the man, uh, the wife, and the husband, rather, um, compete on who will wash the dishes. And um, they have this like um, contest on who to move or speak first. And then it was the woman that is why She's the one who washed the dishes. Okay. Somehow, the story is like that. <laughs> yes, that's right po. Okay. That's actually right. Um, si anong pangalan ng babae doon? Imelda. Kamaldang. And the, the man was named Hugo or Kaugong. Okay. Kamaldang and Kaugong. Those are the main characters. Okay. Kamaldang was sick and tired of washing the dishes. So, she wanted uh, Kaugong to do it. But then, of course, uh, yung custom na baka masabihan na under the saya, ganyan. So, kaugong refuse. So, they made a bet. Whoever uh, speaks first would wash the dishes. Mm -hmm. So, they, uh, they, they have not talked to each other for quite some time. And then, neighbors came and they were worried about uh, the couple. Okay? They were wondering, why aren't they talking? So, saan pumasok yung bayanihan doon? Okay, the neighbors were trying to figure out what's the problem uh, of the couple. So they wanted to help. They asked, uh, they, they did everything that they could do to the extent that they asked a quack doctor, an albulario, to check on the uh, on Kamaldang and Kaugong. And the quack doctor said um, they are under the spell of a bad spirit. So, pinapalibing sila ng buhay. Because actually, they're dead na daw. Uh, masamang spirit to na yan. So, fuck doctor is okay. <laughs> Meddling of neighbors is, is pasok, di ba? Okay, it's none mm -hmm. of their business, but then they meddle. They, okay, kamaldang and kaugong naman could not explain kasi they, uh, they opted not to talk. So, tamang sagot dyan is crab mentality. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, there. And for our final question, Arrange the historical development of drama chronologically. Number one, Renaissance. Number two, Asian Greek. Number three, Middle Ages. Number four, Roman Empire. Na idaldal ko na yata yung, <laughs> yung sagot. How will you arrange this in chronological order? Okay, alam niyo na eh. So the correct answer is letter B. Okay, correct answer is letter B. Of course, we have mentioned earlier that um, drama originated in ancient Greek. So two. And then, of course, next to the um, Greek civilization is the Roman civilization. So, so we have four. Then we have uh, Middle Ages. Yun na yung introduction ng Christianity. That is why there was a decline in drama. Then came Renaissance, na, na revive 
na-revive yung play or drama. Especially in the time of Shakespeare, who, was con- who is considered the greatest English playwright. Okay. So, do you have anything more to add with regards to uh, drama? Any trivia that you would like to share with your classmates or fellow uh, reviewees? Before we end this session, this, this is not going to be the last session that we will have for English Majorship. Can you tell me what specific topics in English would you like me to include in uh, the next uh, review for Majorship? Any area of difficulty or confusion that you would like to cover next meeting? I believe yung mga next session na yata for final coaching, uh, hindi na naka-live. So yung mga nasa Facebook chat, uh, you may consider enrolling final coaching. And you may also want to type sa, sa, sa comment section yung mga areas of difficulties or confusion ninyo. So we can address those in our next session. Um, what do you have here? Okay, literary criticism. Okay. Let's include that. What else? Sentence construction, paragraph sequencing. Okay, noted. Ayan, stylistic. All right, we will cover stylistics and discourse. I remember yung first session natin for majorship. I covered stylistics and pragmatics dun eh. There were many items under stylistics and discourse. Uh, anyway, we will also include those. Stylistics and discourse, pragmatics, theories of language development. Okay, what else? Ayan. Um, linguistics, okay, noted. Although kanina ang dami kong na-cover na, na items under linguistics. Campus journalism, all right. Okay, also have stylistics, yan. How to enroll, doctor. Um, Sir Christian Valle, please message a teacher A if you want to enroll sa final coaching session for 500 pesos. Message this uh, Facebook page. Okay, linguistics yon. Kanina, American and English literature, sige. I'll add more. Although uh, Shakespeare is uh, is part of American English literature, about the stage art and linguistics, plot account, plot analysis. I remember the first um, first part nitong nitong majorship review. I included um, plot techniques. I recall call it. How to enroll the final coaching, Sir John. John Ray, Samuntina, just message this Facebook page, yung Teacher A Online Review Center. You will be guided, but you will be guided in enrolling. Okay, so I think, uh, okay, uh, thank you, um, Sir, Christian, Sir Christian. Okay, I think that will be it for tonight. Thank you very much for joining me in this majorship review, and good luck to all of you. So. I hope you have a good night's sleep. Goodbye, everybody. Take care.